Hello, I'm Jonathan Harder. I work for ZOS Comm Server Organization uh, in VTAM. I've been working in VTAM for the past 22 years uh, in various incantations. I've done design, development, test, and um, a change team and level 2 support also. Um, I'm going to be presenting a series of ABPN topics um, for everyone to use as educational material. The topic that I'm going to discuss today is ABPN configurations, recommendations, and limitations. This presentation came about as a result of one of our primary share presenters leaving the organization. It was um, Nancy Gates. Um, but there were a number of presentations describing what you could and couldn't do with various types of APPN nodes, like border nodes and DLUR, DLUS nodes, etc. And what I noticed while listening to some of those presentations was that there was no real presentation that gave you a consolidated picture of all the things that you should and should not do as far as configuring APPN networks. And so this presentation attempts to put together all the limitations and recommendations that we use as far as designing and building and configuring APPN networks. The agenda will read something like this. We're going to talk about the various types of APPN nodes, what they do and how they attach to each other. Then we'll talk about central directory servers and how they can be used to optimize some of the searching that goes on. We talk about connection networks, which is a vehicle for uh, providing mesh connectivity between nodes without all of the system definition. Then we discuss the APPN session services extensions, which are the APPN architecture extensions that allow VTAM to participate fully in an APPN network and why they were needed to be able to build some of the follow-on functions, like the next one, Dependent LU Requester and Dependent LU Server. That's the APPN version of Dependent LU Attachment, where you want the Dependent LUs to be attached remotely in the network, rather than being attached directly to a VTM or an NCP. We also talk about branch extender nodes, which are nodes used to optimize network performance in branch office type environments. And finally, we'll get into extended border nodes, which is APPN's version of like an SNI gateway, inter-enterprise connectivity. So we'll start out with our APPN node types. APPN really defines only two types of nodes. You've got end nodes and you've got network nodes. End nodes are session endpoints only. They cannot be intermediate routing nodes. And as such, they do not participate in a lot of the networking functions that typically go on. Um, end nodes have CPCP sessions with only one adjacent network node at a time. And that adjacent network node is called his network node server. Whoever he happens to have CPCP sessions with is his network node server. At the same time, end nodes can have as many links into the network as they want to other network nodes, to other end nodes if they want to. Um, but they only have CPCP sessions to one network node at a time, and that network node is the network node server for the end node. Network nodes, on the other hand, can be session endpoints, or they can be intermediate nodes on the session path. They can be INN nodes. Network nodes start CPCP sessions with any adjacent network node that they want to. So network nodes can have CPCP sessions to more than one network node at the same time, or any adjacent APPN network node. Network nodes also have N, uh, CPCP sessions to served end nodes, but the end node always initiates the CPCP session because the network node has no idea whether the end node already has CPCP sessions with another network node server. So the, end, the network node always waits for the end node to start half of his CPCP session and then he starts the other half. There are some specialized types of end nodes which only VTAM implements. We call it a migration data host. It basically is an APPN end node that also supports being a sub-area CDRM that is not um, gateway SSCP capable. So again, it can't be an intermediate SSCP on the session path either. We also have several specialized types of network nodes, most of which again are VTAM only implementations. One of them is the composite network node, which is a VTAM network node that owns NCPs. Because the NCP does not provide full APPN functionality, it requires the services of VTAM to present the APPN image to other adjacent nodes. And so the VTAM and the NCPs that it owns work together to present the image of a single network node to the adjacent nodes. We call that single network node a composite network node. We also have something called an interchange node, which is the network node version of a migration data host. In this case, it supports both APPN and sub-area, but it is allowed to be an intermediate host on the session path, which means it can accept session requests in from the sub-area network and pass them into APPN or vice versa. In a nutshell, the interchange node is the node that you use to attach a sub-area network to an APPN network. The guy in the middle, the interchange node, actually participates in both sides and, and translates the protocol from APPN to sub-area and back again. The central directory server is a VTM network node that essentially acts like the APPN version of a CMC from a resource directory perspective. That is, 
most customers would predefine CDRCs only on their gateway SSCP, for example, and those CDRCs told you where all the other resources in the network would basically be. The central directory server is the APPN equivalent of that. All the other APPN nodes will come to the central directory server to find out where resources reside. We also have a dependent LU server function in DTAM. The dependent LU server function is the APPN version of a CMC from a resource ownership perspective where you had VTMs owning the devices and the dependent LUs off of an NCP, now you can move those devices out remotely into the APPN network, and the dependent LU server can still service the dependent LUs on them, provided that there is a corresponding dependent LU requester on the device end of the network. Extended border nodes are the APPN version of an SNI gateway, or inter-enterprise connectivity, and we'll get into that quite a bit later on. We also have something called virtual routing nodes, uh, which are basically used to represent an APPN connection network or a shared access transport facility. This started out as being token ring type attachment, also X25 um, and some others, but it eventually evolved into basically an en enterprise extender type of connectivity, which is basically SNA routing over IP or UDP. We also have a couple of network nodes out there that can act like end nodes under certain cases, and we'll talk about those in later charts also. One of them is called a branch extender, which is used in a branch office type of environment. And then the other one is an extended border node or a peripheral border node that's attaching to an adjacent node that is not a border node, and we'll talk about those a little bit later also. So here is a network diagram that basically tries to give you a picture of how some of these node types might actually fit into a network. We're talking about some workstations over here, which are uh, pictured in green. For those of you who don't remember my color coding, green means an APPN end node, red means an APPN network node, and blue is a subarea node. So these are workstations that are configured as end nodes. They're attached to a connection network so that they can get to each other, and they can also get to their owning VTAM, which is the um, composite network node. You know, it's a VTAM with an NCP, so it's a composite network node. It's an interchange node because it attaches to subarea nodes as well as APPN nodes. It can provide the transforming between the two. It can be configured as a central directory server also so that we can optimize our APPN searching. It can also be configured as a border node so that you can attach to other APPN networks via the border node function. We have a branch extender down here who's presenting an end node image up to VTAM. That's why it's green on top. But he's providing a network node image down to these workstations down here so that they have a network node they can attach to for their network node server function. We'll talk about this quite a bit later in the presentation. A migration data host up here is an VTM end node that's allowed to start summary sessions to other summary nodes, like this summary guy down here, but also APPN sessions over to the APPN node over this other connection, like into the uh, interchange node or the CMC. So the migration data host is another one of those nodes that can be both summary and APPN. So the recommendations on the types of APPN nodes that you put in your network are pretty much this. You want to define as many of your nodes as end nodes as possible because that basically isolates them from some of the network traffic, like your maintaining of the network topology database, as well as broadcast searching for LUs and such like that. But at the same time, if you make most of these end nodes, they can actually dedicate more of their resources, more of their storage, and more of their CPU to production work, which is actually getting real work done, LU, LU sessions. At the same time, you should try to define as few network nodes as possible. The network topology database is going to be smaller that way, and so it's easier to optimize session routes across the network, and it also reduces the amount of overhead involved in broadcast searching. The fewer network nodes you have, the fewer places that you have to send the broadcast to. So we don't want you to minimize, we don't want you to shortcut yourself on the number of network nodes you put in your network. You should definitely have enough in there to provide all the connectivity that you need and possibly even backup routes in case you have network nodes that come down for maintenance or come down accidentally, for example. But the bottom line here is too many network nodes can cause some performance problems. Um, I'm not sure that you need to worry about that too much unless you're getting up into, you know, the higher double digits, mid to high double digits as far as number of network nodes goes. Finally, you have to use specialized network nodes as they're needed. For example, as long as you've got NCPs out there, if you're doing EPPN, you're going to need composite network nodes. As long as you attach to subarray customers via SNI, for example, you'll always need interchange nodes. Uh, CD servers are typically recommended for all of the smallest networks, and you see some of these other examples down here. You'll really see more about these as we talk about them in the later presentation. <coughs> 